Hello, have you ever wondered how to make your own assembler? Well, here I will show you how to generate machine code from scratch. Here we begin with a very simple application written in assembly that prints hello world. Let's compile it and see what we've got. For starters, I will use NSAM assembler. We can use it with the following command. Then we need to use linker. And finally, we can run our executable and test if it works. Everything seems to be fine. So let's see what kind of machine code is under the hood. We will use IDA to decompile the object file and see all of its hidden secrets. You can get IDA for free. I will put link in the description. Now we select our object file. You may also later compare it with the executable if you want. Now the most important thing. Let's go to Options, General, and choose how many opcodes we want to see. Let's set it to some high value, like 12, so that we can see all of them. Here you can see the header of our object file. It's not that interesting, it only contains some meta information so that the linker can later use it. Slightly below is where the code segment begins. This part right here is the machine code that was generated. Each line corresponds exactly to one instruction, for instance, here you can see several movement instructions. In particular, this first one and this right here, they both write to EAX register. And you might notice something interesting. They both start with the same byte, B8. And then the following four bytes are its operand. They tell what value should be put in this register. However, if you look at the other movement instructions, they actually start with a different byte. This way you can see how the register influences the machine code. If you want to create your own assembler, you need to know exactly which byte corresponds to which register. In order to gain an even better understanding, let's move on to something more complex. Here I added a simple loop that prints the hello world several times. Initially, I put 3 as value of one register, then I print the hello world, and next I decrease the register, compare it with 0, and if it's greater than 0, then I loop back and print again. And I repeat it until the value of the register reaches 0. So in total, that should print it 3 times. Now this assembly might allow us to see what the jump statement looks like in machine code. In order to see even more details, I decided to extend it with lots of redundant calls so that we can compare them with each other. For instance here, first I initialize the EAX register in lots of different ways so that we can later compare what the machine code looks like for every single one of them and we could see all the differences. I highly advise you to do the same if you wish to create your own assembler. Of course, if you were serious about creating professional assembler, you would need to read the full documentation provided by processor manufacturer. But realistically, nobody these days needs to create an assembler. All of the assemblers have already been created and all the people interested in doing this from scratch just do it as a hobby. So to make things more interesting for you, I will show you how to create your own assembler by reverse engineering an existing one. Okay, so as you may see here, this is the exact same file as I showed you previously, but it has a lot more redundant code in it. For instance, here, there is a lot of jam statements that only differ in the label, so that later we can use them to reverse engineer the symbol table in our object file. So this is what our object file looks like now. Here are all the labels that I put at the beginning. Right here you can see the address of every single one of those labels. We can compare them with the addresses that are found here. So it seems that the jump instruction translates to the code EB and after that there is some address. But it seems that this address doesn't really correspond to the addresses that we can find here. The address of main one ends with 5, but here main1 has address 9c, which is completely different. Hmm, what might be going on? Well, there is something that you cannot really see in IDA, and that is the symbol table. However, we can very easily look it up in the command line. Just write the following command, nm 
ex3o. Here you can see the full symbol table. All the addresses exactly correspond to what we saw earlier in IDA. However, the addresses found in the jump statements are completely different. And this is all due to linker. The good news is that if you don't care about the linker and you only want to create the assembler itself, you can just skip the symbol table and don't generate the object file, just generate the executable right away and instead of using labels, make all the addresses relative with respect to one another and you can even store them in some variables. In general, implementing jump statements will be the most difficult task, but the machine code for all the remaining assembly instructions is very straightforward. Of course, there are hundreds of different instructions and implementing all of them might be too tedious, but if you really want, this knowledge should be enough to allow you to implement your own assembler.